The chimera, according to dictionary definition, is a hopefully mythical beast in Greek mythology. Um, it had the body of a lion, pardon me, the head of a lion, the body of a goat, I get mixed up, you know, and the tail of an alligator. A formidable beast indeed, one would suspect. And uh, the main feature of this animal was that the closer you got to it, the further away it was from you. Now that's not my idea, it's their idea, so don't look at me <laughs> blankly like that. <laughs> the closer you got to it as you pursued it, the further away it was from you in actuality. So it was very difficult to hunt it down, you see. And that is very much what parapsychology is all about, folks. Parapsychology is a study of things that go bump in the night. Parapsychology, alongside psychology. And it encompasses all phenomena that actually do occur but have no explanation in science. Hmm. Sophia Loren would uh, qualify in my estimation. <laughs> How does she look that good at that age? I mean, come on, let's get real here. This is not oil of ole, it must be witchcraft. <laughs> but seriously, on the subject of parapsychology, it is the only science admitted to the AAA as the only one that has not had one Uno Einstein, one replicable experiment in all the 120 years that it's been around. Now to me, that would seem to be like um, an MD, a doctor, medical doctor, who has been in practice for 120 years, and as a result of his interference, every one of his patients has died. <laughs> Wouldn't you think you'd get into a different profession? Take something easier, like space probes or something like that, you know. Uh, but at least you'd have some success there. Come on, friends. Isn't this strange? And yet, I have to tell you this small anecdote. I get set back on my heels every now and then, and this is one occasion where I really was set back on my heels by two formidable gentlemen, both parapsychologists, very leading parapsychologists, as a matter of fact, leaders in the field. One, Stanley Krippner from the Saybrook Institute in San Francisco, and um, a fellow uh, from uh, Scotland, from uh, the University of Edinburgh, John Belloff, very respected scientist in his own right and both parapsychologists and former presidents of the Parapsychological Association. So not people to be trifled with. And I had them out to my home in New Jersey when I lived there, if you call that living, um, <laughs> for lunch one day. And uh, we had a wonderful lunch. We enjoyed a bit of banter back. Well, they respect me. They disagree with me completely, but we respect one another. And, and that's all for the good, of course. And I finally hit them up with a big question. I looked the two of them straight in the eye and I said, guys, one of you has been 30 years in this business, the other 35 years, in the business of parapsychology, and you have never yet had a replicable experiment. Why do you stay with it? Beloff didn't hesitate at all. He said, I think I can speak for Stanley here. He said, it's because we both believe deep down that there is something here to be found. That really set me back on my heels. And I reached across the table and shook their hands in turn and said, gentlemen, you have my total respect and always will. That is what science is all about. You stick with it. When some Petri dish with agar jelly in it on the windowsill shows that the, gee, the, the culture that I had in there is not growing in little spots, I wonder why. Oh, throw it out. It's only an old Petri dish anyway. And you know, oh, Fleming decided he wouldn't do that, and so we have penicillin. If you think there's something there, go after it. No question of it. For more of James Randi and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randy.org.